Hi there, welcome to the Little Eden Podcast. This is DJ and Cindy. Yeah, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, whatever point you decide to watch the video, I guess. Uh, before we get into everything, we just want to remind you to like and subscribe. Uh, how was your day? Amazing. Mine was too, because we spent it together doing some work on the land. We, we got, were blessed. Yeah, we were. We got to border things out, do the garden. Yeah, put, plant more things. Planted some cattail, planted some collard greens. I mean, we just had a great time. It was just, it was just wonderful. It was hot, but it was fun. Yeah, we did a lot of primitive type of things, using things that we already had on the land that would have just been there to get rid of, but... Yeah, we just, out well. we just did some sifting and sorting, you know? Yeah, all <laughs> those um, hard clay rocks that you guys see on the mound is actually, it's got a lot of minerals trapped in it. So as the rain comes, those minerals, instead of escaping, will soak into the ground, into that mound. And I, just so you guys know, um, that mound is kind of a hugo culture. Uh, method of gardening. Yeah. So there's wood pieces in there. It is all topsoil that was separated out, which is a, a good reason why we used it for our garden. And to, for cook curb appeal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so as the wood rots, when it finally does rain, and with the heat and humidity we have in our area, a whole new colony of things will start Birthing. It starts to break down and just provide like a lot of nutrients. Yes. It retains water really well. I mean, it's. And it's, that's going to be for years to come. Those things last for at least a couple of years. And then by then it'll be a whole system. This is a little, this is a little example, you guys, if you're, if for your reference, if you need to take a look at it, uh, that's the way I spell it. I misspelled it. It shows that, you know, she, she's a little bit more knowledgeable than I'm more knowledgeable about the back of Eden gardening. She's she's really been doing experimenting on this, and it's been really fun. It's been yeah, really it's fun. Also, there's a Holzer's um, method of gardening that's similar to that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're using, we're combining our different yeah, methods together. Yeah. Based off of like what we have there, what's been done, it's just like making the best of what we like the materials, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So just to kind of roll into some stuff, it was a really crazy story I saw today that I showed you. And it's about this chess robot that broke this kid's finger while they were playing chess. Yeah, with that title, it just sounded so maliciously done. It, and it was because there was a parameter of like moving the pieces that probably correct a fallen piece. And the boy moved the piece too soon and it went to adjust the piece with his hand on there still and you know what happened was the boy had their safety rules that are involved with playing i guess with robots with that robot in, yeah. in particular i guess because it's like and a, the yeah. child moved too quickly so it was kind of an accident that that happened but by that title you're like oh yeah you know, a lot of people just read titles i know but um yeah that was very interesting Oh my goodness! Then, um, <laughs> what blows my mind the most about that, right, is the fact that they're letting like a kid play with an experimental robot, right? Like they're still kings to it, right? Like you shouldn't have to. It should recognize if there's a. It should have some ability to recognize if there was a human hand that moved it. Yes. I mean, I guess it wasn't in their budget for for what they use for cars, yeah. right? Oh, what did you call that earlier? You asked me if they were talking about it. LiDAR? LiDAR. Oh, yes. yeah, LiDAR detection system. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, really good at field. it's probably not in that budget, but it'd probably be worth it after this incident. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Just to understand the, you know, yeah. the surroundings a little bit better as another safety feature built in. Can you imagine when, they, I mean, AIs are getting to the point where they're saying they're going to be in every home. <laughs> imagine the first one's coming out and because they don't know the fragility. What do you mean? There is an AI in, in most most homes. It says it's coming. Yeah, well, there's Amazon. Oh, yeah, as far as robots. Yeah. Oh, you mean like full, full walking yeah, the Tesla robot. about. The Tesla robot. Yes. Yeah. Imagine an accident like that happening with like a pet or a baby or... 
Have you ever seen iRobot? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're describing it's like they make a decision based off of a percentage rate of what's the most viable one to save instead of like maybe what's the more moral one to save I mean I mean just I'm talking about handling simple things that we do every day yeah like what if they you know hurt a pet by you know picking it up or you know like the initial I mean, that's coming. They're saying that every household's going to have one. Yeah. And um, with VR coming, I guess you'll be intravenously fed by this robot just so you can live your life in, I guess, the Matrix. I, Think about that. I wouldn't want to do that. Personally. Think about the temptations, though. A lot you of can people, fly. You yeah. can be anything you want to be. Yeah, you could. You could stay underwater as long as you wanted to. I mean, it'd be so easy for some people because it's it's so hard in dealing with the state of the world right now because of the shortages, the increase in inflation, you know, the, the problems that have been going on, right? And then... I saw this article. Premeditated stuff. Yeah, I know. Preplanned for a long time. Well, I saw this article, and it's cost of living crisis. Teens, this is in the UK. Um, teens making money for their families by joining gangs and selling drugs. And it's and like. It doesn't stop there. We think gangs, drugs, there's other things. Trafficking of humans, children. I mean, it just goes. I mean, where does it stop? If, if, what was it? Like 15 years ago. Or maybe even twenty years ago, one a, one person being human trafficked was worth two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's. I mean, it's probably it's probably worth like a lot less because of how hard things are getting right now. People are probably willing to be like going into that. And that's what's sad about these yeah. things in some countries. Well, in California, does it? It's not in the just in some country. Yeah, California. That guy I showed you the article about. Yeah. Grabbed the two-year-old toddler, and the mother started fighting him. Is in broad daylight at twelve o'clock at noon at the train at the train stop. Oh my goodness! He tried to grab the two-year-old and was determined to kidnap the two-year-old. The mother fought him, and then finally, people passing by stopped him, scared him, and ran off. And God, I mean, that was in California of all places. I mean. God protects the little children. I mean, I know not all children are protected in every case, but, you know, those people will have a judgment that seek to hurt a little, little one. There's scripture there. against that, yes. Yeah. It's better for a millstone to be tied around their neck. Yeah, and tossed into the ocean. Yes. And it's like, not that we sh people should go doing that. It's just like the consequences of what they're going to face for hurting the innocent, right? Yeah, well, these kids are, are starting early. Yeah. That the the article that you had up. They're starting early to do those things. They're they're wanting to influence kids sexually through the, the sex ed classes, you know, and when when it's a when the, when a school or an area that's local decides they don't want it, all of a sudden it's big news, right? They're they're like, Let's not teach more about these things. Let's let's like teach the basics and say these are the consequences of engaging in you know, activities and yeah, and they're like, I don't yeah. even really think schools should be the place where that's talked about. I think no. it should be really honestly between the parents and children. Yes. At the end of the day. Yes. I mean, it's that's a private conversation. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's not, I don't think it's the responsibility of the government to put themselves there. It, it's not their privilege. To yeah. do that. No, it's not. It's and the privilege of the parents to do that. And parents should be really on top of what their kids are watching all the time. All the time. I mean, it shouldn't it shouldn't be so lax. Like a lot of people get They're their so kids busy to, working. I know. Or addicted to something. I know. And then when they come home they just don't like they're just, they're zonked out because of how the pressures of yeah. everything around. And then when the child becomes an age where they can start wanting to be independent from their parents, they've already been brainwashed to disrespect their parents from school. Yeah. And then so as hormones kick in and they have no respect for their parent, it's hard for their parent to even guide them, but yet they're legally still responsible for that child. <sighs> yeah. It makes it 
They've These put, people in charge went through college. They're not uneducated. They're not some, you know, person who's never been in the world. I think the reality is they want a, like a dissolution of the family unit. It's and been that way for a long time. I, I mean, I think they feel like that's a burden to them, to, to like the general. Any unity. Yeah. It's like a lot of people that are in charge, you could say they're utilitarian, yeah. right? And they view it in a way of saying like, it is more efficient for the goals of what I view is best for humanity if these things are the case. Yeah. And the family unit's a big block because it's not it's hard to come between a family even though they have the differences, right? They even managed to achieve it. Yeah, in a lot of communities and different kind of cultures they've they've separated people. Yeah. And it's because of media. It is, they knew how to I mean, from the first time it existed they used it. Any entertainment from the first existence of it, they used it. I mean, how often do people even sit around and do stuff together anymore? No one. No one. Oh, I forget his name. Alan something. I wish I knew, could remember. I'm terrible with names. but um, And I apologize if I ever forget anybody's name. But he remembers the first day every household in his community basically had a television. It went literally, he said it went literally from everybody in parks and walking homes, around outside, again. outside. Yeah. And they then, were interactive. They were all inside afterwards. And once that, yeah, television was in their house, it was like crickets. It's just a sad state of things and it gets deeper and deeper and deeper into it. Now it's like nostalgic that families sit in the living room and watch something together. Yeah. Well, that's the great thing about where God put us with the land. Amen. Every one of our neighbors that we have met is super friendly. Is yes, it, they're a true community. You go to this, you live in the city, and you're not you don't you might not even know your neighbor next to you. Mm -hmm. You would be kind of like it would be an awkward situation just to see who spoke first. I mean, even in rural communities. Where there's apartment complexes and things like that. People still don't engage with each other. They don't. Some might. It's not everyone. No. But the chances are less likely. And here we are living a few miles apart. But it's almost like seeing old family. Yeah. You know, is. like distant relatives or something. Because the way they treat you. They just speak so kindly. And it's yeah. so nice. It's very enjoyable. But it's like we're protected. We're in a generally safe area. But not everybody is, is, is safe right now and have has that experience. There's um there's been a volcano eruption in Japan and it's you know, not hurt anybody. Just when they started their nuclear stuff back up. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't I didn't see they that. They had plans for starting it back up. And uh, Japan is an island that is very susceptible to tsunamis yes it's not a smart place it's good to have the nuclear energy maybe you know but it's the damages of natural disasters are becoming more and more apparent you know no matter what humans build we see that from all the way to the skyscrapers to the georgia guy songs nothing human beings built will stand look at notre dame you know it took a couple of people to burn that down well, he's bringing out all the idols, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Amen on so, that. <clears throat> it's going to happen. Yeah. In, in every Old Testament situation, what does he do? God says, build your walls, sharpen your weapons, get your armor on. Gather your forces. Yeah, get yes. your very best together if you're yeah. coming against me. Then they, they won't be able to stand. And at the end, every knee is shot bow and every tongue will yeah. confess. Jesus Christ is king. That's right. Is exactly right, and what a glorious day that will be! Oh, uh, I can't wait. I'm um, just—I mean, I know that there's a lot of suffering that will have to happen, unfortunately, because of choices made by humans. But yeah, it's okay, yeah. it's going to be good. It's going to all the end. The victory is here. Yeah, Jesus won the victory yeah. over death, so over sin. I mean, we can't ask for more than that. No, we cannot. We just have to repent, turn to him, 
and just try to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you feel weak, it'll get you through whatever that part of your life is that keeps you, that you, that you keep falling in, right? We all have our ups and downs, you know, and we all have that struggle, even if you know Jesus Christ, right? But it's like when you have those moments where you feel down, trying to rely on the Holy Spirit, it'll take you further than you realize. Yeah, talk go. to the Lord. Amen. I do that out loud. You know, I do that out loud. Amen. Well, we just want to thank everybody for joining us. It's already been 30 minutes. I feel like it has. Oh, wow. <laughs> Even if it's Time not. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. I don't it, know if nobody ever watches this, we're having fun. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I don't, even if it has been 30 minutes, I feel like, you know, we've had a good conversation. and We always have good conversations. Yeah, I just like it yeah. on a good note. And uh, I just like to thank you guys. And again, if you didn't in the beginning of the video, you made it this far, I appreciate it. Like and subscribe and just check out more of our content. Thank yeah. you. And have, have a blessed night. Have a blessed night. Blessed day whenever you watch. <laughs>